we are aware that behind every problem, there is, an an there is a question. And behind every question, there is an answer. And behind every answer, there is an action. And behind every action, there is a way of life. Every problem is an emblem of some internal opinion or point of view or perspective that is not in harmony with the fundamental order of the universe. So every problem that we're having is actually forcing us to ask a question. When you ask the right question, an answer will emerge in a language and in a way that you will understand. And when that answer emerges, it will pull you into an activity, an action that will ultimately birth a way of living, a new environment, a whole way of being in your own life and the life of those individuals that you are, are that you're working with. And so I'm going to go through that again because I didn't bring the, the hand out because I went from L.A. to Austin to here. But behind every, every problem, there is a question. Behind every question, there is an answer. Behind every answer, there is an action. Behind every action, there is a way. So take prosperity as, just as an example. You're going through a cash shortage in your individual life, and, uh, and you, you're, you're asking, why me? Why am I broke again? Why do I don't have enough money? Those particular questions will lead you down the wrong path. They won't be inspiring. They won't be uplifting. They won't be healing. They won't be guiding. And so you ask, what is the nature of prosperity? What is its nature? And if you listen, which is a skill in and of itself, because that's a lost art. Individuals don't listen anymore. Individuals interrupt each other while other people, while they're still speaking. And so we end up listening with the ear beyond the ear, and we begin to hear about the nature of prosperity. We begin to hear that we live in a field of plentitude and abundance. We begin to hear uh, that scarcity is a mindset that leads to incorrect actions. We begin to hear that we're surrounded by an infinite good, and it begins to strike us in our core. After we hear the answer, it begins to give you an answer, I mean, a, a, an action. And that action has something to do with generosity, something to do with giving, something to do with circulation. Give something. And the mind says, well, wait a minute. I'm asking this question because I don't have anything. I'm asking the question because I'm broke. I'm asking the question because I, 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 I have a lack. And so the answer will come back again. I didn't say give money. It's a, the field of, a, of, of abundance, the field of prosperity is infinite. Give what you got. Give a smile. Support someone. Help someone, as we've heard about here today. And that, when that becomes a way, when that begins to shift our way of thinking, then what happens? The universe floods you with the opportunity to see possibilities, opportunities, guide you into right action because you're thinking from an expanded paradigm. You're, sp you're thinking from how can I serve? How can I give? How can I share? How can I contribute? Rather than why don't I have something? You begin to think, I am here to be of service, and so the universe, which is trustworthy, never compromising its nature, never contradicting itself, begins to flood you with ideas, flood you with motivation that allows you to be more you. We begin to ask the right question. Now, in, in terms of that work that you're doing, in terms of what I call work play, and that's the attitude we have to have when we're, we're dealing with our staff, we're dealing with our employees, we're dealing with our businesses. The attitude must be the consciousness of work play. You must have the same awareness that you had when you were playing a game in which you weren't seeking to win the game, but you were just so involved in playing uh, that creativity emerged from that space because you weren't tightening up and contracting because you were trying to win it. You were just in the moment so that spontaneous goodness and creativity could just take over. And so this opens up the space for us to catch, for us to catch a higher vision of what's possible in our life and what's possible in the endeavors that we're called to do. And so one of the strategies that we have that when we work with different boards and we go out around the world is we have the vision process in which we ask empowering questions. We ask, what is the vision that's trying to emerge in this particular business? What's the vision that's trying to emerge in this particular department? What is the vision that's trying to emerge in my own life? Again, with deep listening, you'll begin to hear, intuit, feel, sense 
that which is trying to bubble up and you'll learn to articulate this vision. You'll learn to feel into it. You'll learn to feel into the possibility as we heard the earlier speaker uh, say. You'll learn to feel into it and then you'll ask, you'll ask, what must I become in order to manifest what I'm now beginning to catch? In other words, what's my growing edge? Where must I grow? Where must I change? Where must I transform? Because we cannot have anything that we're not willing to become. We, we can't have anything. And you've all been through probably many strategic plans. You've probably been through many consultants that come in. And unless there's a fundamental shift in our becoming, unless there's a fundamental shift in our willingness to change and become something different, every change, will, every, every movement will be merely cosmetic. And so we ask ourselves, what must we become in order to manifest this vision that we're now beginning to articulate? So there's vision, and then there's becoming. And then we ask the next, que next question. What do I already have that can be in service to the vision that, I, that I'm beginning to articulate? What do I have already? What's in my house? What resources? What, what gifts do I already have? So instead of thinking from lack, and not having, we're thinking about what is it that I already have that can now serve this vision on the edge of our becoming, on the edge of our transformation, on the edge of our becoming more ourself. And then we dive into the feeling tonality of willingness. There is no change in any environment unless there is a deep willingness. A yielding and allowing uh, uh, you we can we can plaster the wall with vision and possibility but unless in our gut there becomes a deep and an abiding willingness to change to shift then everything is for naught. and so what we do in our practice is we absolutely stop and as Eric invited you to, to stop and get a feeling of who you trusted, to get a feeling of, of trustworthiness, to get a feeling of, of who you trust and what trust feels like, we stop and we get a sense of what willingness feels like. We think about the moments in our life in which we were willing to go for it. Willingness to do something that we had never done before. Willingness to, to be different. And we feel into that willingness and we engage the yes within us. We engage that vitalizing yes and once we're able to articulate the vision, and once we're able to, to stand in the field of becoming and, and articulating where we need to grow with radical honesty, and then and once we're able to embrace the resources that we already have and become willing to let go of that which no longer serves us, willingness takes us over the vibrational hump and there's an energy of the universe that compels you then into right action. You begin to speak and talk about a possibility. When I was doing my uh, uh, PBS special uh, and moving people through the vision process of which we've gone through in short as a, just a quick hitter, I invited people to go home and at least for an hour of day, turn off the television, gather your family together or have friends come by and tell a vision. Turn off the television and to tell a vision so that you would, instead of doing a vibrational lobotomy by watching television all the time, you would invite your friends over and you would actually speak to possibility, speak to the vision of your life, speak to the vision of your business. And interestingly enough, people did this around the nation, but it was the teenagers and the young folks that really took to it. They started turning off the television, meeting at different places, and telling vision for their life. And they started emailing me about the great projects and the great possibilities and the great things that they were doing to change the world, to change where they were living, because they stopped, listened, and began to tell a vision and then live in the potential and the possibility based on the articulation of the vision that was arising. Now we heard earlier about the quadrant of possibility. And the quadrant of possibility is extremely important in terms of moving the needle from impossibility thinking into that which is possible and that which can possibly manifest in your life. A number of years ago, uh, we were, our community was moving from one place to another. And uh, we were moving into a new building. And uh, we had to be into the, in the building at a particular period of time. Uh, in, in order not to lose our conditional use permit 
And uh, in between moving from one building to another, we ran out of money. And the building wasn't finished yet. And we couldn't move into it because legally we couldn't occupy it. And so I had, uh, we had a board meeting. And in this board meeting, you know, all the board members were there, even the contractor that was building for us was there. And we had two flyers. One flyer said uh, that the, we would commence, we would open up our doors at a particular date. And the other flyer said we were temporarily closed until we were able to garner the cash necessary. And so everybody was grumbling in the meeting, you know, we need to stop. We, this is impossible to raise this kind of money in this short period of time. It's impossible to complete the task before we use the conditional use permit. All of this grumbling and grumbling and grumbling. So I had this man named Jerry, who was a rather large guy, sit in the chair in front of the door, and I said, no one's leaving. Jerry, don't let anyone out of the room until we finish with this meeting. So Jerry sat there, you know, and, and I went around the room and I said, is it possible for us uh, uh, to complete this project by this particular date, to raise the money, to have the, 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 the resources to actually finish this project? And one by one they would go through, I don't, this is not possible, we need to put out the flyer that said this can't be done, etc." And I said, that's not what I'm asking you. I'm asking you, is it possible? That's all I'm asking. And they'd ultimately say, yes, it's possible. I said, hold that space. Just hold it for a minute. And then I'd go to the next person. Is it possible that we can complete this building and move in at the proper time and raise the money, et cetera, et cetera? And they went through all of their consternation. And finally, they said it was possible. So I went through every single board member, even the contractor in the room. I said, is it possible? I said, I want you to just hold the space for possibility for one week. We've articulated the vision. We've become willing to change internally. We, we mapped out the resources that we had. We became aware of our willingness for this to occur. I said, just one week, stay out of complaining. One week, stay out of finger pointing. One week, don't create any scapegoats. One, one, for one week, don't ask any disempowering questions at all. Just stay in the field of that which is possible. So that was on a Saturday. That Tuesday, uh, we, had, we had, had a loan. We, we were asking for a loan of about $400,000 from this particular bank. And uh, on that Tuesday, the owner of the bank was walking and looking over the shoulders of his employees. And he looked over, he said to this guy, what are you working on? He says, you know, Agape International, they want to, buy four, they want to borrow $400,000, but they don't have any collateral. And the owner said, is that Beckwith? He said, yes, yeah. give him the money. And the guy said, they don't have any collateral. He said, is that Michael Beckwith? He said, give him the money. So by Tuesday, we had 400000 Next day, the contractor called. And he said, you know, I was so moved by your meeting that I'm going to take the money out of my own pocket and I'm going to put on two crews, two crews that will work day and evening to complete the task. And I know you guys are good for the money. So by Wednesday, by holding the field of vision and possibility, Two things happened that we didn't plan for. Two things happened that we didn't pray for. Two things happened that we didn't try to manipulate. It just occurred because the field was ripe with willingness and possibility. What's happening here at this magnificent conference is that you're creating a field of possibility, a field that is as rich and as real as magnetism, as rich and as real as gravity, you can't see those fields, but they affect you. You've come in here for a period of time to be entrained in a field of possibility of where you can change your inner motivation, your inner goals, your, your higher purpose, so that in that field, via the articulation of vision, via the willingness to become more of your real self, via embracing the resources that you have, via letting go that which no longer serves you, accepting a deep, vitalizing willingness, staying out of scapegoating and complaining. You're creating a field that will begin to move and guide you in a language and in a way that you can understand. You'll be moved to meet the right person at the right time. You'll be moved to do the right thing at the right time. 
You'll be moved to see as I was seen when the universe in it introduced itself to me that not only you, but the people around you are significant. They matter. They are unique expressions of the cosmos. They have a gift to share. They have a, a something that they are to give.